Jeff Nipper. You've definitely heard of him before because he's the guy on YouTube that does educational, science-based lifter content. When you inject the needle into your muscle, a bubble of oil is squeezed in between the individual muscle fibers, which spreads out and forms this elongated shape. The testosterone molecules then slowly make their way into the bloodstream over the course of several hours. There, enzymes called esterases cleave off that carboxyl group, and then the testosterone is carried by molecules called binding proteins to the muscle where it enters a single muscle cell. Now its job is to make that muscle cell bigger. The one that produces videos that hit multi-million views within just a few short days. The guy who Greg Doucette calls a manlet because legitimately he's like five foot five. Maybe there's something even more important that I missed. After all, I didn't ask any questions about height or facial masculinity. Of course he didn't. He's a five foot four manlet. I'm not gonna ask girls at the gym, what do you think about height? Hi ladies! How important is height in a relationship? Everyone seems to come back around after a year or two where they continue to suggest that he is not natural and he is lying about his natural status. Well, I actually beg to differ. I would say that he is natural and he just pisses everybody off because he has a really good physique. Now hear me out, I'm gonna talk about why and there's really three reasons as to why. And I think after we talk about them, it'll be very clear as to why he is natural and why specifically Jeff Nippert has probably never taken a single drug in his life. Now it's interesting as we see this all over the place, people posting about Jeff Nippert not being natural and what they specifically quote is his last show that he did. Uh, this, this show was when he was, I believe, 22 years old, which he looks very good. Notably, not anywhere lean enough to be highly competitive, but pretty damn lean and certainly really good proportionately. As far as his muscle insertions go, he's got some of the best that there is. But the amount of people in the comments who are delusional are insane. Claw at it! <laughs> People are saying because he makes money off his physique, there's no doubt that he's not natural. The bro is diced and has none of the negative effects of being diced that Natty's would, which again, I would argue he's not diced. He's probably not even close to 6% body fat there. You know, of course he's not Natty. People are just dumb. You're so dumb. This guy says, yeah, dude, you can obtain this physique off chicken, broccoli, and rice for sure. But look, there's three really simple reasons that are completely valid and which shows that he is natural. First of all, people don't typically realize is how short is and specifically how much he weighs. In specific, this video is several weeks post and he steps on the scale. He weighs 164 pounds at a non-body fat percentage at a arguably much softer body fat percentage than he was when he was actually on stage. Now, I can't actually find where he talks about his current weight when he is on stage. This was, you know, eight years ago, but he has been rumored to be somewhere around 135 to 145 pounds, which he has been that low of weight before in competitions. I just don't know about the specific one people are quoting here. And you really have to understand how small of a person that is like that that is the size of most female bodies he doesn't weigh more than the dumbbells i use to bench press so yeah his physique looks good but what happens when you compare it to other people who are of different heights for example in this competition he was doing prejudging with several other people now i would argue that these people don't look extraordinary in any capacity but something you'll notice is that they're pretty much all the same size if not bigger than chef himself what you will see is that Jeff has better conditioning, he has more muscle fullness, he has better posing, but at large, there is nothing separating him that uniquely compared to anyone from his left or right. He's still a small dude, and the smallest on stage, no doubt, in both height and muscle development. I think the one thing that separates him here is he's actually just posing appropriately. And then this brings me into my second point, is that his family's genetics are fucking insane. Usually, you have good genetics when you are jacked, just in any standard, whether you're on steroids or off steroids. And you can see this trait within the familial line. So for example, if your mom or dad is jacked, there is a pretty good likelihood that you might just as very well be jacked. Just as if one is tall and the other one is tall, or one is tall and one is short, you're probably going to end up a little bit taller than the rest of your family. This isn't any news to you, it's just congenital stuff. But let's look at his mom. She's fucking yoked. She doesn't sound like she's on gear. She has a very feminine voice. Uh, so I'm here with my mom. Uh, yesterday we went for a workout together. 
It was, uh, I think, you know, my interest in doing it was seeing you do it, to be truthful. And uh, I saw it as an opportunity for me to do, take on a challenge that I had never done with fitness on any level, really. Like, the, the woman is yoked. She is massive. <laughs> like, it's actually thoroughly impressive as she's coaching 50 years old but if that's his mom and she's not directly lifting weights every single day she's not directly trying to be a bodybuilder and she's certainly not taking gear because you don't see any secondary male characteristics within her physique or her face or her voice and look she's an older lady that has no incentive to take gear why would she imagine what her genetics would be like fully training fully on a diet fully really embracing the bodybuilding lifestyle i mean she would max out her potential and be a lot more impressive than she is just chilling so my other point is that he's you know, got a family line of this freaks yes they're all short and smaller people but they're jacked nonetheless and that really does a man some favors when he's trying to build some muscle even if you're natural my mom denise has been weight training for about 30 years and has built herself a pretty impressive physique naturally she also set the canadian national bench press record in 2015 after just a couple months of training and trained herself to do 100 push-ups in a row at age 50. She was my first real personal trainer, introducing me to her style of bodybuilding and endurance hybrid training when I was 17 years old. My dad, Bill, has been a fan of bodybuilding since long before I was born. He began weightlifting when he was just 15 years old, using scrap weights in his bedroom, and managed to build himself a great physique, repping 17 and a half inch arms at five foot six inches tall, bigger than my own arms. Lastly, there's all these pictures of people comparing Mike Isertel to Jeff himself, saying that how is Jeff, as a natural, able to stack up with someone who very openly abuses androgens, which I think we're all very aware of Mike's issues at this point, but they shouldn't be this close in size. And I think what people are really looking at just doesn't do justice to the situation. For one, we're looking at probably arms and chest, which it comes down to posing here. For some reason, I don't know why whoever taught Mike posing, he's crunching his chest down. He's not pulling his sternum up, whereas Jeff is pulling his sternum way up. Jeff's arms look big, but that's because he's pressing them against his body, Whereas, again, Mike is just sort of having his elbow way back and he's not doing anything with his tricep. Arguably, you can still see, though, that Mike is very inherently bigger. He's both taller and wider. But the dead giveaway is that, okay, also another point, though, Jeff has shorter limbs. And when you have shorter limbs, the muscle fibers that my, you know, six foot two have an ass has to stretch from my shoulder to my elbow. That's a long distance. And so those muscle fibers get pulled very taut. And that means those muscle fibers are going to lay a lot flat. When I cut my arm distance in half, you know, my humerus gets shortened by six inches or something. I then have a much bigger bicep because those muscle fibers aren't necessarily so pulled tight and they look a lot bigger. And in this case, yeah, his arms might look bigger because he has short ass arms. Am I crazy? Or is your hand really small? about the size of a KFC spork. But then what is a, the dead giveaway, right? The always with natural guys, what the dead giveaway is, is the legs. If you just look at his legs, they pale in comparison to Mike by tenfold. I mean, Mike looks way bigger because of his leg development. And this is a very common trend you see within natural individuals is that yes, they might have really well-developed upper bodies, but they struggle to maintain or hold on to leg mass at all, unless they're just beating the shit out of them primarily and never dieting. And again, we can just look at these pictures all day long. Mike is a lot leaner. And so sure, he might not look as big, but he was also dieting at this time, probably not as full as someone like Jeff, who's not really trying to be lean for any particular reason. And you can see very clearly how small Jeff is in comparison to Mike. So my point is, is while he might stack up in comparison to some of these people that we all know very well who are using androgens, the proportions aren't really accounted for. And if you put him next to somebody who was, I don't know, two, three inches, five inches taller with the equivalent body weight for that height, it would be very apparent that he's tiny compared to them. So yeah, in my opinion, Jeff Nippert is completely natural. I don't think he's ever taken any kind of gear. He just has a look, a really short physique. He's short king, man, go for him, dude. Manlet 10.0 or whatever. But like, I, I don't think it's necessarily that he's taking gear. He's just tiny. And so his body is shrunk down to here. His muscles are shrunk down to here. I mean, imagine how easy it would be if we just, let's just take my body right 
right now, shrink it down to, you know, 10 inches from here and then see what my muscles look like. Just maintain their mass. They, they would be exceptionally bigger. And that's not necessarily how it exactly works, but it's a pretty good indicator as to why someone who is shorter might look a lot bigger. We see this in bodybuilding in the highest levels. Most of the top open bodybuilders are all under six feet by a large margin. Even the tallest bodybuilder right now, which is arguably Samson Deoda, is under six feet. So people say he's six foot. He's pretty much a 5'11", from what I've heard. And everyone else is like 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, six, five, seven. They're not tall guys. When you go to classic physique, that's kind of what that class was designed for. People who are generally six feet and taller. Those are the guys that get the top five every single year. But they have weight caps and they're much lighter. But looking at Chris Bumstead, you'd be like, that motherfucker is huge. He looks just like an open bodybuilder. No, he's just tall and jacked. He's actually a lot smaller, but because he's taller, he looks proportionately bigger. Whereas a short guy can be really dense and huge, but he weighs a lot less. So anyways, that's my rant done for the day. I don't think Jeff is taking any form of steroids, but if you like this video and you want to take some steroids, I suggest you stick around and learn all there is to learn about these kind of things, or at least watch people who've used them and abused them and done it wrong or right, and I talk about it.